As we strive to create a better world, we often focus on changing the external factors such as organizations, political entities, religious bodies, and social bodies. However, we must recognize that true transformation begins with our own personal rebirth. We must undergo a basic change within ourselves, and this depends on how we see ourselves. Our self-perception plays a crucial role in determining the kind of person we become and the life we lead. Whatever we refuse to affirm about ourselves will never manifest in the outside world. Therefore, we must renew our thoughts and reform ourselves from within. The objective of this transformation is to recognize the existence of a larger, finer being within us and align ourselves with it. To achieve this, we must pause and consider our identity. Who do we perceive ourselves to be? We must recognize that the ideal man is always seeking a new incarnation, but until we give him human parents, he is unable to give birth. We are the means by which the law of cruelty in nature can be overthrown, and the basic objective of consciousness is to influence this redemption. Religion, like charitable giving, begins with personal experience. If a religion comes from a person's deepest convictions and is the outcome of personal experience, those are the only criteria that matter when evaluating it. The religion must give a man a profound and enduring sense for it to be noble for him. Whatever occurs to him personally, nothing will be a problem. Therefore, we must make an effort to visualize ourselves as the kind of men we want to see in the world. Renewing our minds is not enough. We must also alter our concepts. We shall gradually change into the embodiment of our ideal if, in our isolation, we imagine what we would actually experience had we attained our goal. Our thoughts are the natural outgrowth of our ideas, and a man's innermost thoughts make up his own identity. Therefore, we must always work to change our heart, because without internal change, external change is useless. In the pursuit of personal transformation, we must recognize that mental and spiritual knowledge are fundamentally different from one another. We acquire mental knowledge of everything by looking at it from the outside, contrasting it with other things, defining it, and analyzing it. However, spiritual knowledge is subjective and personal. It is what a man accomplishes in his alone. When we are alone, we are drawn to subjective experience. Therefore, we must focus on fostering our qualities rather than controlling our emotions. We must be quiet, stop doing, and perceive as the remedy for craving. This is the only means by which the process of atonement is possible. Every great idea begins with a period of intense concentration. Creativity is essentially a heightened susceptibility or a deeper receptivity to ideas. In order to live a better life, one must make their dreams for the future a reality in the present moment. When we are completely absorbed in our deepest desires, and we transform ourselves into the ideal version of ourselves, we begin to see our dreams manifesting in the world around us. We learn that the present moment is a powerful tool that can propel us forward towards the future rather than hold us back. This is the key to changing the course of our lives. My intention is to help you see yourself in a more positive light and to make the actions you can take to achieve your dreams clear and attainable. In order to communicate effectively and inspire others, we must return to our core principles. People need to be motivated by high ideals, and it is essential to start by regenerating our own lives and developing a new way of living. One of the greatest delusions that people have is the belief that they are capable of achieving everything that others deem to be feasible. We all have a desire to take action, but often we are unsure of what action to take. It can be difficult to accept the reality that we have no control over certain aspects of our lives. However, the truth is that everything, including the events that happen to us, the things we do, and the things we cause, all happen for a reason. The way we perceive ourselves is crucial to the way we experience the world around us. If we refuse to accept certain truths about ourselves, we will not see those truths reflected in our surroundings. In order to change our lives, we must change the way we view ourselves. Deepening our understanding of ourselves is always possible because we all have the capacity for infinite depth. It is up to us to realize this potential. To truly experience life, 
we must be willing to let go of our old selves and be reborn. This does not mean that we will physically die, but rather that we must let go of the old parts of ourselves in order to become the new ideal version of ourselves. This process of transformation is often described as being obedient to God's will, which is essentially a surrendering of the ego in order to become aligned with a higher power. When we devote ourselves to the ideal we seek to embody, all conflicts are resolved, and we become more like the ideal version of ourselves. Those who lack a wedding garment, or a symbol of the desire for union, enter the kingdom by acting dishonestly, pretending to believe in something they do not truly believe in. This person may radiate virtue, love, and decency, but they are missing a vital element that will allow them to merge with their true self. Once we are connected to the truth, we must shed our old selves and regenerate in our mental souls. The truth will ultimately prevail over any pretense or falsehood. The human race is beginning to understand that there is more to life than just suffering and pain. While these experiences may have been useful in the past, it is inconceivable that any power in the universe would want humans to be sick, in pain, unhappy, and ultimately meet their demise. It is logical to believe that God would never ordain anything other than humans being a perfect expression of life. However, creating an automatic individuality is impossible, even for God. Therefore, suffering is necessary for individuals to gain the necessary experiences and become individualized. The concept of individuality goes beyond just being oneself. It encompasses self-determination, free will, mindfulness, personified spirituality, unrestricted liberty, and the ability to support that liberty with personal power. There is no such thing as a mechanical or spontaneous individuality. To be authentic and unrestricted, individuality must be fashioned in the likeness of perfection and granted the autonomy to make significant discoveries on its own. The question of why God did not make humans free and compel that freedom is simple. Even God could not create a freedom under compulsion, as it would ultimately amount to the very worst kind of bondage. There is no such thing as compulsory freedom, and God could not violate his own nature. Therefore, humans must be created with the possibility of limitless freedom and allowed to discover that fact for themselves. However, on the road to that discovery, they must be subject to the law of all life, and if they violate that law out of ignorance, they will suffer. Freedom of will means the ability to do, say, and think as one wishes, to express life as one personally desires. Just thinking and dreaming of freedom would not be liberty. To imagine without the power to manifest that imagination would be to remain in a dream world, which would never come to complete self-realization. This is not the world humans live in, for their world is one of self-expression, even though that expression may at times destroy them. There is no sin but a mistake, and no punishment, but an inevitable consequence. Wrongdoing must be punished, for the law of cause and effect must be eternally operative. Rightdoing must be rewarded for the same reason. Humans are capable of making mistakes and sinning, and as long as they continue to do so, they will be subjected to automatic punishment. However, this punishment is not the result of an evil force in the universe, but rather an unchangeable law of cause and effect that governs everything. Sinning brings its own consequences, while righteousness is its own reward. The problem of evil cannot be resolved until humans understand that it is not a separate entity, but rather a misapplication of the law of freedom. The only way to eliminate evil is by refraining from engaging in it and actively pursuing goodness. When the entire world chooses to do what is right, the problem of evil will cease to exist for the entire human race. Humans are created and left to discover themselves. On the road to this self-discovery, they experience the creations of their own imaginations, which ultimately show them the truth.